Hey guys, listen, I was just chatting with my good friend and real estate agent, Alan Klein from RPA Real Estate. I almost didn't believe it when he told me that my home value has increased by over 30% since I bought it two years ago, and I bet yours has too. Alan said this area has never seen a real estate market like this before, ever. If you're considering selling your home, now is the time to get the maximum money in your pocket. If you'd like to know what your home is worth or have any general real estate questions, call or text Alan Klein today at 570-592-7961. That's 570-592-7961 or visit him online at 570sales.com. Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. and I'm your host for the On The Stacks podcast. Today, I'm chatting with Miles Thomas, owner and baker at Miles Above The Rest Bake Shop. What's up, podcast episode 70 of the Honest Dax podcast in the Blue Door studio. Welcome to the podcast, Miles. Oh, welcome. I didn't know that there was going to be a welcome for me to talk. Yeah, yeah. That was like your cue to be like, oh my God, I'm so happy to be here. I'm actually glad it's also episode 70 because I hate odd numbers. Do you? Yeah. I don't know why I have an irrational fear of them. I have to do things in fours. We'll okay. get into that later. Okay. So like, yeah. so it was either 70 or 74 or we were in trouble. Yeah. Well, there would have been 80. Yeah, or 76 or 80, but... Oh, yeah. See, I told you I can't count, so... Yeah. bad at math. Bad at math. But good at baking. Good at baking. I hope. Yeah, you are, though. I had it. I actually bribed Miles today. Um, I tricked him into coming in. Um, uh, we're not even actually doing this podcast. I actually just uh, had him come in yeah. for free baked goods. This isn't even recording. I was just yeah. brought here under the pretenses of this being an interview for a podcast, and I'm now being held hostage against my will for the baked goods. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So so how did you get into baking? Well, it's a long story, and I hope it's long enough that it doesn't, or I hope it's interesting enough that it doesn't make people head on out as soon as I start telling it. But when I was younger, I was bored. I was a bored child, and I didn't like being bored because only boring people are bored. And I don't like to think that I'm boring, but I needed something to do. And like my brother could play the piano, and he was on like a soccer team, and I didn't have my other two brothers yet, so they were off the hook. Um, But I needed something to do, and I couldn't find something that I wanted to do. I was into creative things, like I would be taking art classes at Michael's, and I'd be going to, like, Home Depot on, like, the weekends with my grandfather, like, building things, which is probably, like, the most, like, people probably would never expect that I'd be like, I'm going to Home Depot. Um, What were you building? It was like little things that they they had like building classes for kids. Like you'd build like a CD case or a CD tower, I meant, or a um, like a little box to store things in. I don't know what ever happened to any of that stuff. But I remember it was fun building it. But I remember being bored and annoyed that I didn't have something that was like giving me attention, which for a 12 year old to be like, I need more attention was probably the start of like the problems down the line. Um, but I remember my parents would always be working. My mom would work in the morning and then come home late at night. My dad would work pretty much the same schedule. So my grandmother would watch us in the afternoons when we got home from school. And I remember sitting in the kitchen with her wanting to like watch her cook and all that. And I remember thinking it was interesting, like how things would be happening. And then like, I started noticing like my parents cooked as well. Don't let my mom and dad get offended. Me saying they didn't cook for us. Yeah. This Uh, this show will be canceled. Yeah. They'll my own parents will cancel me. But um, like, I remember even watching like my dad grill and like seeing like the fire and all that I was like, well, this is interesting. Like what's going on here. And I don't think I had a cookbook at the time. But I remember going to my great grandmother's house at Christmas. And she can't remember this because she's dead. But um, she had a cookbook. It's called the joy of cooking. Anybody who like knows how to cook, I think has this cookbook. And her and I like looked through it probably like in a way that like a grandmother would read a storybook to like her child. She like read this book to me. Like it was a story. Like we were just looking at recipes. She would explain what things were because it's an old cookbook. It has like old weird, at least back then it had like old weird antiquated recipes. And I remember thinking like, I want to learn how to do this. Like this, this seems interesting. This is neat. I want to learn how to do this. And you were 12 at this time? I was 12 and in dire need of attention. (laughs) Of course. Um, And then... Yeah, so my grandfather was the type of grandfather who, like, whatever you were interested in, he would buy that for you. Like, if you wanted to make drugs, he'd buy you, like, my little meth lab. 
And he was the first person, at least in my memory, that ever bought me any sort of bakeware that I'd need, like pans and um, pots and knives and like a little book on like recipes and all that. And was the first person that not... I don't want to say the first person that believed in me because my parents are the first person, that, first people that have ever believed in me. Um, but that was probably the first time when I was younger that I felt like I had something and that I definitely could do this. And this was an easy bake oven though, right? And it was an easy bake oven. I actually made these cookies, <laughs> these cakes, all this is from, an, I still use an easy bake oven. You're still oven. using it, right? I'm still using it. Um, same one all these years later, take a little knife and jab the things out because my original Lise Bake Oven had it for one hour, snapped the little handle. Rookie yeah. mistake. Yep. Didn't even grease the pans for that either. Oh, my Just God. Poured my, like, $2 cake mix into an ungreased pan, shoved it right in that Easy Bake Oven. Actually, I would probably say that, like, my Easy Bake Oven was, like, one of the first big starting points for me. Like, having, like, an actual oven that I could operate and not need my parents around for, and that I knew probably wasn't going to burn the house down, um, was probably the starting point for me to be like, this is what I want to do. And unfortunately, it took me a very long time to realize that this is what I want to do. Why? I spent so much time wanting to be something else. Because, like, I knew that I was good at this, but it didn't feel fulfilling enough. Like, I remember, actually, when I was younger, other than being good at this, my first, like, Im not impression, but first thought of, like, I want a career. I was, like, 12 years old, and I'm like, I want to be a heart surgeon. And my parents were like, no, let's, no. Let's bring the Easy Bake Oven back. Yeah. <laughs> and... For the longest time, like I kept going in the direction of things that weren't, they weren't not achievable, but I wasn't doing the work to achieve them. Like I wanted to go to fashion school. I applied to fashion school. I got in. I changed my mind. I said, I don't want to go here anymore. I was going to college. I actually went to culinary school, but dropped out. Didn't want to do it and couldn't find happiness in something that was fulfilling. And kind of went far off to the side in a direction that I didn't want to go in. But once you kind of start something, you can't stop because you never realize until it's too late. What was that? I was in a very bad relationship. It was a very controlling relationship where I practically needed permission to breathe. And I don't know why, but I thought that was normal. Like, that seemed normal to me, that this is what I should be. Like, this is a normal relationship. Like, this is how relationships are. How, how old were you then? This was when I was in college. So if I lie about my age, I was <laughs> I was 18 when I went to college because I was 17 when I graduated, which always throws me. Like, that's what always throws my mind off when I think of how old I am for things like because I always think like, no, I was 18 when I graduated. No, I was 17. But I was 18 right in college and into like probably the first major relationship I'd ever be in. Um, and it didn't start off bad. Like, I mean, I didn't, there were red flags now looking back at it, um, but I didn't see them because first relationship, this is what you read about in movies and read about in movies, yeah. see about in movies and read about in books and hear about in songs. So it seemed normal to me that this is what I was supposed to be doing and how I was supposed to be. And it wasn't until I started listening, and this will probably sound nuts to anybody else, but it makes sense for myself. It wasn't until I started listening to Taylor Swift that I realized what's right in the world and what's right for me and what's wrong in the world and what's wrong for me. And I realized that that relationship was not right. But unfortunately I let that relationship go on for about five years before I really realized that it was not the right thing for me. And then I came out of that relationship, not mentally healthy enough to focus on myself because I felt like a prisoner who had just broken out of prison and had their freedom back and wanted to do any and everything they could. So any drink that I could drink that would make me feel better and not like 
a prisoner anymore, I would drink. And little did I realize I was entrapping, it's not a word, I was trapping myself in this dark downward spiral of drinking and light drug use, mom and dad, and not a healthy place. So then what did you do? I would wake up every morning feeling how I was still feeling, which was miserable and like a prisoner and sad. And it'd be 10 a.m. and I'm already having a bottle of wine, not just a glass, a full bottle. And it wasn't bad enough that like I was doing this to myself. It was bad enough that I didn't ask for help and I didn't let people know that I was doing this because at least I thought or think I hid it well enough that I had a problem. Um, Not a problem, but an issue, I'd say that an issue that I didn't want to talk about. I didn't want the world to know that I wasn't okay because I was always good at pretending to be okay or seeming okay. And I didn't want people to think that there was something wrong. Did What did you do? Did you like eventually ask for help? No. Um, I actually, and I know that not everybody is lucky enough when they go through something like depression and a slight drinking problem like that. Not everybody's lucky enough to get out of it on their own. I was lucky enough to wake up one morning after I would say probably drinking myself to near death and realizing I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm tired of waking up feeling like I could cry, but I can't because like my tear ducts are dry. Like I can't feel anymore and I don't want to feel like this anymore. And I realized, like, if I don't get out of bed now and actually become productive, then I'm never going to get better at this. And I'm never going to get better. And I realized that no matter what, if I wasn't going to do this for me, I had to do it for my family, my friends, because I couldn't do this to them. So you just kind of like quit cold turkey and... I did. And it was really fucking rough for a hot second there. Um I mean, when you go two years pretty much drinking nonstop just so that you don't have to feel how you feel, it catches up with you when you stop. Your body's like, hey, where'd that go? What's this? I don't want water. Where's the vodka? And I mean, I'm physically better now and so much mentally healthy and better now. I'm in a real relationship. It's just the best thing that I could ever ask for where I am right now. And, and and you're baking a little more now, too. I am baking so much more now because, well, one, there was a global pandemic that made me stay home for a year. Yeah, and so, so how, yeah, what happened? Like, how, how did you how did you get into doing so much more baking to the point now you're you're doing your own thing? I was bored again, which I didn't like because, again, only boring people are bored and not boring. But I remember I don't specifically remember what got me back into it to this level other than that. I was organizing my bookshelf and I just came across one of my old cookbooks and I was like looking through it. I'm like, you know, I haven't really baked anything in a while. I haven't done anything good. Like everything I was baking was like basic brownies or like a banana bread. And at that point, everybody was making banana bread and sourdough. And that I didn't want to do because I already knew how to make sourdough. I didn't want to be basic and be like everybody else making sourdough. I wanted to actually challenge myself. So I bought better equipment for one thing. I threw away my measuring cups because I would say that the biggest secret in baking is throw away the measuring cups, buy a digital scale, buy a digital scale. Don't buy like the scale that you get at the grocery store when you're weighing bananas and you can't tell if it's a seven or a nine and then you spend $16 on the bananas you weighed. Get a digital scale. What are the other secrets? Buy good ingredients. I mean, you're not going to hear print a book made of paper from like the dollar store if there is such a thing you're going to buy good paper to make a good product you have to buy good ingredients to make a good product and this is probably where some people think i'm snobby or that i'm elitist maybe or a bit of a martha stewart you're not going to get the same results if you use best yet sugar as opposed to domino sugar the brand names aren't just there for you to spend more money. Brand names are there because that's all that brand does. Like Domino only makes sugar. Best yet makes everything that you can buy at the store. Like they're not making the same stuff. 
I mean, I went from using the 75 cent eggs that went on sale to using pasture raised pasture raised eggs that are six dollars a dozen. <laughs> um, and even butter, like you wouldn't think it, butter is not the same. I will use cheaper butter if I have to, if I'm splurging on something else, but I try not to. I will always buy the better butter. And it's because better butter has more fat, more fat is more flavor. And you have to buy good chocolate. Like if you're going to make a chocolate cake and you're going to sit there and use cheap chocolate chips even in that cake, your cake is not going to come out good. You have to use good chocolate. I prefer Swiss chocolate. I prefer to import all my ingredients if I can, like a smuggler, smuggling ingredients across the border. Don't come for me. I'm not doing anything illegal. (laughs) Um, Even sprinkles. If you buy cheap sprinkles, the dye will leak into your batter the second moisture comes in contact with it. If you buy better sprinkles, they maintain their color. Never would have thought of that. Yeah. There's little things that I think people don't think about. And that's why they don't end up with the results they want because they're not paying attention to every little detail. Like cooking, you can get away with maybe swapping out an ingredient for one if you don't have it. Um, But when it comes to baking, baking is a real science. There's a reason why recipes are written the way they are and have the ingredients they do. You can't go make a birthday cake or a vanilla cake and be like, hmm, I don't have milk. I guess I'll use ketchup and expect (laughs) the same results. Like you have to follow a recipe. Like we're not writing cookbooks and writing down recipes just for shits and giggles because we want to be like, hey, hey, you need 75 cups of flour for this. We're writing it down because it's the way it works. The recipe is like my recipes. I have tested and tried these recipes for years now. I did not just come up. I wish I did, but I did not just come up with this vanilla cake overnight. This vanilla cake took me about five years. Lots of eggs and butter wasted because I wasn't following my own instructions and following what I should be doing. Yeah, so talk about uh, some of the products you brought today. What did you bring? Oh, yeah, there are so many delicious things here that sadly people can't see, but they'll see them in the photos. I brought my absolute favorite thing that I make, which some people might be like, oh, that's boring. It's a confetti cake. Not Funfetti. Pillsbury's not here. Confetti cake. And I know that that might be boring, but to me, like, confetti cake is the quintessential birthday cake. I know so many people think, like, oh, birthday cake has to be chocolate. I'm sorry. I'm going to lay down the law. Birthday cake has to be confetti cake. Absolutely. But I brought my confetti cake with what I, again, this is where people are like, hmm, podcast snob. With my cake and the frosting that I make myself, I think, is what a quintessential birthday cake is. So that's why I brought my absolutely favorite, even little mini ones I made for you today, because I want to bring like all these cakes and have you get home fat. Um, brought my favorite vanilla cake with vanilla frosting and sprinkles throughout all of it. And when I was coming up with the cookies that I brought last year, because these cookies aren't that new of a recipe, aren't that old of a recipe. These cookies, I decided I don't like the little thin cookies that you get at the store and I don't like the really dry cookies. So I was like, how can I make cookies better? So I went through the whole process of what a cookie is and different types of butter, sugar, weights and all that, how you get where you are with a cookie. And that's how I came up with my birthday cookies. These are, I would say they're a vanilla cookie, if that's a thing. They're a vanilla cookie that are loaded with confetti sprinkles and really good real white chocolate chips throughout them and a very secret ingredient that only bill knows do i i think you told me before i did tell you the secret ingredient i I won't tell anyone it's cocaine (laughs) it's not um but there is a secret it's not i'm sorry that's not why the room is so hot yeah spoiler alert um but no there are some secrets that i can't share with everybody but i could always share with close friends who i trust to not give out my secrets i won't tell anyone and then what uh what's this other cake This other cake that I brought is a cake that I actually just came up with last week when I was cleaning out my pantry. Um, 
I don't know when I bought them, but at some point in the past month, I bought the little like Biscoff cookies, which I don't know if you've ever like been to Wegmans and seen them. They're actually really dry and they're not very good on their own, I don't think. You're supposed to buy this thing called cookie butter that you like dip the cookies into. And it's a really fun way to choke because both of them are really dry. Love it. Um, But I had them and I'm like, well, I have these cookies. They're cinnamon flavored, I'd say. And then I'm like, well, I have all these bananas. Because I don't know why I don't buy bananas when I go to the store. But for whatever reason, when I come home, there's bananas. I don't know where they come from. Every week, I'm making something with banana because there's just always bananas. You don't know where they came from. I don't. I mean, I'm sure I'm buying. I'm not stealing them. <laughs> I'm sure I'm buying them. <laughs> but there's always bananas, and bananas are like avocados. You blink, and they're bad. Yeah. Um. So I'm always got like. Old, not moldy, but good, edible, still bananas. Good, good clarification on the mold there. Not Thank you. moldy. Thank you. Just old. Yep. Bananas. And I'm like, well, I have bananas. And I have these cookies. I don't know if they're going to go together, but what's the harm in trying? Because if worse comes to worse, I still got cake. So I was like, well, I don't want to make just the basic white frosting to go with the bananas because... Banana is such a weird flavor, I think, that it's very easy to lose banana in the flavor of something. So if I did like the birthday cake frosting with this, it's going to taste like banana birthday cake, which I didn't want it to taste like. So I'm like, well, I'm going to grind up some of these Biscoff cookies. I'm going to throw them in there. I'm going to mash up this banana, throw in all some other secret ingredients as well, and bake it and see what happens. And I made the frosting. The frosting is a not really a cream cheese frosting because I don't love cream cheese icing. I think it's one of those things that's so, like how people love whipped icing. I don't love it. It's so gloppy. It's weird. It melts. Cream cheese is like just eating gloppy. a bake. It's that's like eating a, a cake. Yeah. Well, it is eating a cake. It's like eating a cake with like a brick of cream cheese in there no matter what. And I don't like that. So I was like, well, what else goes good with banana? And I figured peanut butter because who doesn't love peanut butter? Hell yeah. I mean, peanut butter and banana, I think it's as old as me turning 78 this year. Um, so I made the frosting, I made the cake, I assembled them. And this is probably the fourth one I've made because once I started making it, I couldn't stop because it's just one of those things, even with the birthday cakes, like when I make them, I can't not just make one. I have to keep making them because one, I know I'm going to eat them because I love them Two, They're fucking delicious. So I take it that the birthday cake is your favorite cake. It is. Birthday cake for me is... Like I said, it's the quintessential birthday cake. I know some people might think it's boring and basic. It's not as like bougie and out there as like some things are now in food. Like, God forbid, it doesn't have like avocado or guacamole in it. Yeah, that that wouldn't be a good cake. No, it wouldn't be. Um, But for me, birthday cake has to be just, I know it sounds plain, but it's what reminds you of childhood. Like when you have that type of cake and it's just something so comforting to have something that like brings back memories, especially good memories. You don't want anything that's going to bring back bad memories. So So. you had these every year as a kid or what? Not specifically this cake, but I mean, every year as a kid, I had a birthday cake and then I started to get bored, which again, as a child, didn't want to be boring. I wanted to be out there and over the top. And I was like, okay, well I'm, Sorry, mom and dad, I don't love the birthday cakes anymore that you're getting from the store. I'm not going to slander any of our local bakery stores. Um, But I was like, I want to make my own, which I don't know why my mother thinks it's like the saddest thing in the world that I make my own birthday cake. She like is every year when I'm making my birthday cake, she's like, you're making your own again, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, that's so sad. (laughs) So sad. Not like sad as in like. Ew. Sad isn't like sad that I'm like making my own, like somebody should be making it for me. Yeah, somebody else should. But my thing with that is like anybody can make me anything they ever want. I mean, I'm not going to say no to a cake or a cookie, but like it's my birthday. I know specifically what I want. And it's kind of like now my own birthday tradition to make my own birthday cake. And every year I don't make the confetti one because then it starts to become not special when you're doing the same one every year, I think. So sometimes I switch it up. Last year, I did a white cake with a raspberry filling and the same birthday cake frosting, which was wonderful until I found out my boyfriend, Carrie, was allergic to raspberries. Oh, no. Yeah. So can't make that one again. I'll have to supplement strawberries. Um, But I think this year we're going with the classic. 
vanilla birthday cake again for for this year's birthday yeah because i'm gonna be 29 second year in a row i was gonna say yeah you're celebrating your 29th again yeah again 29 again. Wow. probably gonna Congra- be congratulations thank you i don't think many people get to celebrate the same number so many years in a row yeah no that's um gonna that's be a... doing it probably for the next 10 years well, that's great good for yeah. you good for thank you thank you you look good i hope yeah I was saying like I got here and it started to rain. So like probably the whole like smoke and mirror that I put on my skin to make it look as young as it does probably like melted off. And then it looks like here comes Shrek with these cakes. <laughs> yeah, you got the good skincare routine going on. Uh, good and expensive. And expensive. sadly. Yeah, it's I I know again, elitism comes through. It costs a lot to look good. It does. It's I'm not using dollar store products on my face. <laughs> no drugstore here. Oh, no, you're not? No, nope, sorry. Oh. Actually, I mean, my secret moisturizing routine is just a whole stick of butter. That's it? Yep. The whole stick? The whole stick. To the face? Just not even, Just like leave it on the forehead and let it melt down. Okay. Let it like marinate the skin. No, I actually layer so many skincare products sometimes that uh, my boyfriend carries. Like it's pretty much like you're pickling your face at this point because you have so many things on your skin. And I'm like, it works. It keeps me youthful. It prevents me from aging. We don't want to age. Um, keeps you from turning thirty. Yeah, got to throw that off as long as I could. Um, that I just caught myself doing something that I've noticed I've done for the longest time as I refer to myself as we. I promise it's not like some weird like multiple personality thing or some like devil possession thing i don't know why i was was looking for the other guest i didn't see anyone else i've forever like i refer to myself as we and i don't know why i guess i am we just here we come (laughs) (laughs) and it's just one person yeah so so back to the baking a little bit yeah um what do you have a name now for for your business i do i have a name and a whole three-hour story that comes with it oh boy let's hear it so you're hearing it first here the name of my bakery is the Miles Above the Rest Bake Shop. I love it. Insert like. But um, sh- yeah, or something like that. I couldn't think of what those were called. They're called drums. Yeah. Yeah. So I went with the name Miles Above the Rest because that name is actually one that my grandfather on my father's side picked out when we were younger. That was what he always wanted me to call my bakery. And of course, I was like 14. I'm like, I hate my name. I don't want my name in there. And, didn't want to call it that. So I was like, I'm going to call it like the bitch bakery. Um, you know, he always wanted me to name it that. And I feel like it's a great way to honor one of the people who pushed me into this direction. Wow. That's super cool. The yeah. name dates back that far. Yeah. Not that, not it that, dates, that far. It I'm dates not trying back to date like you. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. We're only 21 now. <laughs> no, but that's really cool that that name like came out when you were a teenager. Yeah. And it was something that, like every it wasn't just like my grandfather like came up with this name like everybody in that side of the family was like so when you open up the miles above the rest bakery when's it coming i'm like it's never coming i don't want to do that um until i finally realized like i want to do that that's what i want to do that's where i'm going don't always love the sound of my own name but people aren't going to come to my bakery if they don't know it's me yeah can't call it the bitch bakery and then people like i don't want to go there he's a bitch yeah well, yeah yes mm, i it just happens. We. We. We is. We are. We is yeah. a bitch. <laughs> we is a bitch. So at what point did you decide like, hey, this is what I want to do? Honestly, last year. Last year, sitting home, getting fatter, eating all these cakes and cookies, that this is what I want to do because it was the first time when I started doing it then and people were like eating all these things and they're saying, this is so good. It was the first time I actually believed them. I don't know why it took me so long to believe that I'm good at this, but it did. I don't like that it did, but it took me a long time. Yeah. So, so what's next? What's the plan? We are looking for a shop at some point. Definitely not going to be this year. Cause again, we're still in pandemic mode. We got pandemic bills to pay. Um, but there is going to be, I will say, by the time I really turn 35, not even 35, I'd like to move that up to by the time I really turn 32 or 33. Or 30 for like the fourth time. 30 or for 29 the, for the fourth time, sorry. We aren't turning 30. We're just going to skip from 29 to 31. Okay. Um, definitely within the next four or five years, I don't want to have a physical shop. I will have a physical shop. 
that people can come to. I like that. They can't come into it. Just have to look at the windows, window shopping. Yeah. Like at the bakery. Can't buy anything, but. Yeah. Yeah. So what's like your dream bakery look like? Like a cave, dark, candles, spiders. Um, No, I, it's actually a good question because nobody's ever really asked that before. I don't know. Because like I've always wanted to open a bakery and I just contradicted myself by saying that because I just said I just last year wanted to do that. It, I always wanted to prior to open a bakery, I always wanted to own a bed and breakfast because my mother and I are probably, and anybody can challenge me on this, the biggest Gilmore Girl fans. And one of the biggest parts of that show is the family business that they own, which is a bed and breakfast. And my mother was always like to him, like, you should open a bed and breakfast. I'm like, I can open a hair salon and you can open a bakery. I'm like, I don't think those three things go together. You don't want to get your hair cut while you're getting a cupcake. Yeah. Getting hair in the food. Doesn't we don't have well. that here. No. Um, but for the longest time, I wanted to open like a bed and breakfast until I was like, that's even more money and more to do. Like, let's start small. Um, but no, if I had to say what I wanted my physical bakery to look like, and this might not make sense. I'd want it to look like a birthday cake. Like I'd want it to look like the place that you could walk into and know you're coming out of this place with a good birthday cake. Like soft colors, tile floors, all good lighting because don't need no damp bad lighting, making all the food look musty. <laughs> but spiders, sp- spiders, witches. Um, definitely a little place where people can sit down and have some coffee, maybe have a mimosa. I don't know if getting a liquor license is as easy as I think it's going to be, but I don't know. We'll see. Have to... Yeah, boozy birthday cake. Yeah, I mean, we already got the, I don't know if you've ever had the boozy bee cake. I haven't. No, I haven't. They are ridiculously amazing because one, they don't taste like ice cream cake. I know they're supposed to obviously be ice cream cake. They don't taste like ice cream cake, which I love. And they're boozy. I mean, who doesn't love that? And it's cake. Who doesn't love cake? You can be miserable before you eat cake, and you can be miserable after you eat cake, but there's no way in hell that you can be miserable while you're eating cake. Yeah. I mean, even a cookie. You can't be miserable eating a cookie. You can be miserable after you eat a cookie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, so your husband just died. Sad. Have a cookie. Like, you can be sad about it later. Have a cookie right now. Everybody, I think, always needs a good cookie. Yeah. How could you? You can't go wrong. Never, especially not with these cookies. No. Mile, Toll, miles above the rest. Yeah. Toll House, don't know her. My cookies. Sorry, probably just lost you. Toll House cookie sponsorship there. Oh, shit. Ugh. I'll apologize. I probably need that sponsorship more than you yeah, do. We'll apologize to them after. We'll send them some of my cookies and tell them this is how it's done. Yeah, the, the real way to make it. You know? Yeah. Not your... Yeah fake store cookies yeah these are miles above the rest yeah better than anybody else miles above the rest on the stacks it's got a i think it's got a good ring to it do you want to open a bakery slash printing shop slash podcast shop slash podcast shop Shop. i don't know where the shop came from i mean people have done worse and weirder things i mean there's those places where people go zip lining i don't know anybody wants to do that but death I mean, I I hate the outdoors the way it is. So to like act, have to physically go do something like that that I have the chance of dying at, never going to happen. That's why I stay inside and make and eat cake. Yeah, a lot safer. I mean, I, could, I have this terrible ability to choke on the softest things. So I probably would still choke on this cake, but I'd rather choke on the cake than fall 50 feet off a zip line down to the fucking Susquehanna River. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But those alligators that are in there. Is there some down there? I was reading something the other day that said there's alligators in the Susquehanna, but then it turned out it was from like 2004. So, but I think they still find them. What, were, like, you, what were you reading? The Onion? Times Leader, but closer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have to cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> but so, no, I mean, it's like that fake bobcat that was up in Scranton. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to that? Well, did you see that it's not a real bobcat? It just turned out to be a house cat. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. It doesn't say much that people don't know the difference between bobcat and house cat. But yeah, also, boy, it's kind of a big difference. It also didn't say much that when I read that, I didn't understand how a bobcat could be here because I thought bobcats were desert cats. Like, I thought they only lived in like India and like Egypt and like Arizona. Like, I didn't think they like lived in the mountains. Yeah. But apparently they do. Them and the alligators. Living in that river. 
Crazy. With those snakes. Yeah. Snakes in the river, too. Yeah. So how can people order from you? I don't have a Facebook at the moment. It's hard enough for me to handle my own personal Facebook. So you could find me on Instagram at Miles Above the Rest Bake Shop. Look at that. Send me a DM. I was going to say, is that what you do? Only if it's about cake. Nothing none of else. those yeah. other kind of DMs. We yeah. don't want those. <laughs> no shadiness. No, yeah, none of that. No crypto trading. I don't even understand it. Yeah. Don't know what that Dogecoin is. You don't? Is that even how it's pronounced? Yeah. Don't know what I... It's bad. I don't even know like how to handle real human money. It's bad enough now. I have to handle like like fake money, internet fake money. Yeah. But no, yeah, just send me a DM on there, or if you see something you like, comment on it. Say how do I get this, and then you'll get it. I love it. If I have it. What do you do? You deliver. I deliver. I don't want people coming picking up. White glove delivery service. I heard. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'll just drive by and throw it on your front porch. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, which that's what you did to me that one time here. Remember, like yeah, I, I just I, came in with these donuts. I'm like, here's your donut. Just like flung them in the door, and like yeah. there was a couple in the still. There's still some ground in the carpet. Yeah, they're think. still here. Yeah, they don't look like donuts anymore. They match the green carpet now. They do. They're yeah, perfect. They match, yeah. yeah, I deliver only within. Probably, I'd say like, what are we? Are we Lu- is Luzerne County where we all live? That this is this. Yeah, that's us. Okay, well, I, I can't deliver to Hazelton, and that's that Luzerne County. Oh shit. Well, you know what? Just charge a little extra. I can deliver to anywhere within Luzerne County that doesn't have snakes. That can get me. I just assume there's snakes in Hazleton. I was going to say, what's with the snakes in Hazleton? I I hate snakes. I guess you had a bad snake experience. Not even in Hazleton. But when I was younger, we had a family reunion out at Francis Locum Park. And there was a snake. And I didn't know it was a snake. I thought it was a twig. And I picked it up. And it was like... And I was like, oh, so it's been one of those things that scarred me ever since Uh, other like when I was a child and I tried saving a drowning bee thinking I'm doing a good deed here and the bee stung me. Oh, yeah. What's that saying? No good deed goes goes unpunished. Stung by a bee. Yeah. And that's why I'm terrified of them now. If you ever see me running down the street, no one's chasing me. I saw a bee. Sorry, I don't like bees either. I know that they do good and I love some good honey. But who likes to be stung? Nobody. I mean... Uh, that might be like somebody's turn on, but could be. I hope it's not. It's kind of kind of not weird. a good one. No, not a good turn on. No, More like turn off. Especially if you're allergic. Which, like, I don't know that I am. All I know is, like, when I got stung by the bee, my whole body like swelled up. Yeah, that's probably not good. But don't even have an epipen because we're here for a good time, not a long one. That's that's what they say. When it's my time to go, it's time to go. Yeah. So, by the way, like, I just have to thank you for for your support of the podcast and i didn't know like before before we started you told me you've been like listening since like the beginning day one i was listening before it was even a podcast this is crazy yeah i had no idea i like wiretapped your house i knew it yeah that was me i thought i heard my own voice echoing somewhere when you like fell in your driveway during the snowstorm or whatever that was me that was the wire that i was like listening in on your house with i'm gonna trip them yeah yeah no, I've been listening since day one. Haven't listened to every episode. I'm not going to be like, I'm one of those people who's like, I've listened to everyone. No, I sadly have not listened to everyone. I uh, am cut. trying to catch That's up. Right. Show's over. Yeah. No, kidding. Go Fake on. guest. <laughs> but no, I've definitely been here since the, not here physically. I never left. You've been part of it. I've Yeah. I've been listening since the beginning because it was something new in our area. Nobody was doing something like this. And I feel like our area gets such a bad rap sometime. And I feel like this was something that was going to shine a light on our area and be like, it's not that bad here, people. Like, it's only bad if you're making it bad. Like, I know people are always like, oh, I can't wait to leave Wilkes-Barre or Luzerne County or Pennsylvania. And it's not always going to get better. Like, yeah. people are still miserable in Virginia. People are miserable in New York. People are really miserable in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's great if you want to, like, leave and go out and do something new. That's fine. You don't have to live where you were born. But it's what you make it. If you're miserable here, it's going to be miserable for you. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, I'm in no hurry to get out of here. I mean, there's places other than this that I love to go, but they won't be as special if I live there. So I'm this just going to go live under the bridge like a troll. Yeah. Down with the alligators. In yeah. Susquehanna. That's where I'm, that's where I belong. <laughs> yeah. And the snakes and the snakes. Yeah. Jeez. Spooky area. We live in sometimes crazy. So one more time before we, uh, before we wrap up here, how can, uh, how can our listeners connect with you online and order? 
Follow me on Instagram at Miles Above the Rest Bake Shop. Send me a DM, or if you see something you like, comment on it and say, How do I get this? There it and is. And you'll get it. I love the name. Thank you. I do. It's not my own. Sad I can't say I came up with that one, but it's something that I didn't always love, but I've grown to love. There you have it. Yeah. And uh, and thanks again for seriously for bringing all of these. Of course. Uh, the, the, the cake, the, the. All the cake. The mini birthday cake. Mini the, birthday cakes are a new thing. The cookies. Yeah, cookies. It was phenomenal. I hope everybody who's going to eat these loves them. I think my wife's eating all of it. I hope so. Yeah, she is. I know she's super excited about this banana one. Yeah, I heard that she's been messaging you. She has been. She was sending me those DMs. She she was sliding into she the DMs. She was like, hey, bitch, where's that cake? Where's that banana cake? Yeah, well, it's on its way home, yeah. Jess. Yeah, right now. Yeah, it's on its way home right now. Yeah, so excellent. Well, thanks again, Miles Thomas, Miles Above the Rest Bake Shop on the Stacks Podcast in the Blue Door Studio. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for listening to my whole hour of shrillness telling my life story. If you'd like to learn more about the On The Stacks podcast, be sure to search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. We'll catch you next time on The Stacks.